We continue in our quest to remake the GSC starters, and this time it's Feraligator. Ever since its first form, Totodile first appeared to traders as one of their initial options in gold and silver, the lion has been immensely popular, especially as Totodile was also part of Ash's team in the anime. We don't have statistics for this, but back in the day, it seemed like almost everyone started with Totodile, so anecdotally, Feraligator was probably the most popular of the Gen 2 starters, as well as the most popular starter of the Gen 2 games as Gen 4 Remix. Another fun fact is that the reason its name is spelled as G-A-T-R as opposed to G-A-T-O-R, like the real animal it's based on, is because the first five generations of Pokemon games had a 10 character name limit, but the Gator spelling has a lot more personality to it, so it works out perfectly. Today we're going to examine how Feraligator fared in the ferocious competitive environment, and so we ask, how great was Feraligator actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Feraligator was one of the Pokemon that most detested the type-based attacking system of the first three generations. It had a high attack stat, but as a water type, its stab was special, and its special attack, while quite decent, wasn't nearly as impressive. The same went for the rest of its stats as well as its move pool. While they were definitely solid, they weren't nearly enough to warrant any use of Gator at all in OU or UU for that matter. For some reason, Gator did not have Swords Dance in Gen 2, while its fellow Johto starter McGain did, marking the first and last time Meganium ever received any sort of preferential treatment. Feraligator found itself in Gen 2 Enu, and there it towered over the low base stat totals and not fully evolved Pokemon populating the tier. It completely warped the metagame around itself with its rest talk set that destroyed pretty much everything. Sure, Raichu could threaten Gator quite well, but Raichu didn't really want to switch in, especially if Gator was running Earthquake as its fourth move, which it did not just for Raichu, but also to ensure it wasn't walled by Chin Chao and to always pull a useful sleep talk against dangerous fire types like Rapidash. It was pretty much impossible to safely answer for Alligator. The only Pokemon up to such a task? Why, other for Alligator, of course. As a result, GSC NU largely centered around Rest Talk for Alligator Wars. One of the reasons Toxic was so popular as the fourth move on Gator was that it forced the other Gator to rest earlier so that you could try to take advantage of it. Of course, even if you could do so with a switch to Raichu, which by the way was really the only thing in the tier that truly threatened Gator, with almost nothing else really being able to scratch it, and the few Pokemon capable of doing so not wanting to switch in. The fact was that Raichu also walled itself, while also destroying nearly the entirety of the rest of the tier. Both Pokemon defined Enyu, and the combination of the two together beat nearly everything, and the only thing stopping them was themselves on the other team, but Feraligator was really out of control, being almost impossible for anything to take on. For the health of the GSC Enyu metagame, Feraligator was banned, meaning its debut generation actually wound up being pretty successful. There's nothing like completely bending a lower tier to your will. Generation 3 gave Feraligator Source Dance, thank goodness. The type-based attacking system meant it wasn't going to be throwing around physical water stab yet, but with SD in tow, Gator managed to become not just viable in UU, but one of the most threatening Pokemon around, brandishing several unique qualities. First of all, in addition to being a powerful offensive threat with decent speed that hit hard, it was bulky. It was not easy to bring Gator down with opposing hits on either side of the attacking spectrum, and this amplified its threat level, as it meant the opponent it would have to withstand more of its hits. One hit KOing Gator without explosion was nearly impossible. Even Stab Thunderbolts, the strongest non-boom attack you could throw at it, wouldn't take it out from full, and the user of these Stab Thunderbolts weren't exactly eager to switch into Gator either. Second of all, it wasn't just a physical attacker, it still wielded Stab Hydro Pump, which allowed it to threaten a wider variety of Pokemon, and more instantly at that. Indeed, Gator's Hydro Pump lending it the ability to not just take on physically bulky Pokemon, like Soul Rock, Gligar, Golem, Needle Queen that otherwise go toe to toe with physical attackers, but to do so with immediacy meant it was a good attacker before its SD boost as well. Not being completely reliant on getting a boost made it much tougher to play around, and the greater number of free turns it leveraged from these Pokemon it threatened meant it had more opportunities to safely grab that boost. 
Once Gator had SD'd up, almost nothing was standing in the way of its combo of Earthquake and the Vileplume Shredding Hidden Power Flying, which also gave Gator excellent super effective coverage for tearing through other UU staples like Scyther, which incidentally was an amazing partner for it, as well as Pinsir and Hitmontop. If Gator's trainer thought Vileplume was well covered, Rock Slide could be swapped in, which let Gator smash through Altaria with greater ease, as well as taking out Firo after a boost and threatening to one-hit KO Scyther with that without a boost. For Alligator was on a staple of all sorts of offensive teams for its wonderful ability to dish out massive hits while being able to withstand them efficiently in return, and its ability to boost so highly so quickly made it particularly lethal against stall teams. Whether Gator was breaking open the opposing team for a teammate like Scyther to clean up, or whether it was picking up the remaining pieces left in the wake of a teammate like Kangaskhan, it was excellent, and as such was recognized as one of the best Pokemon in the third generation of UU. At long last, Generation 4 brought Feraligator to the promised land of the physical special split, meaning it could finally fire off Water Staff from its attack stat. As a bonus, it can now use the grass smacking ice coverage of Ice Punch from its attack stat as well. The good news didn't end there either. It also got Dragon Dance as a new boosting option, lending it a new level of threat as one that didn't just hit hard, but could go as fast as well. It wasn't going to be breaking into OU as its Dragon Dance variant was just a discount Gyarados, while its Swords Dance set was too slow, but Gator settled into UU once again as a solid sweeper. Power creep meant its ability to take hits wasn't quite as impressive as in the previous generation, though it was still a fair sight more resilient than many other offensive pokes and its ability to stomach an attack or two was highly appreciated. However, Power Creep also meant that Gator's ability to dish hits out was also not quite as impressive, though again, it was still solid in this department. It had great competition with the likes of Azumaro and Kabutops, though this wasn't really much of a blow to its viability, as its set of attributes was too unique to be anything near the realm of being outclassed. Dragon Dance alone ensured it always had a solid role. It was a little unspectacular, but overall it was a solid UU threat throughout Diamond Pearl and later on Platinum. Then Heart Gold and Soul Silver came around, and in a beautifully timed move with respect to their status as remakes of the games Gator originated in, these games gave it exactly the move it had been longing for all generation, Aqua Jet. Priority was an Arceus sent for it. It gave it more utility as a whole thanks to its revenge killing capabilities, of course, but mainly it turned SD Gator into an utter terror. It wasn't exactly that DD Gator was outright weak, as that be silly, but fairly often it did find itself longing for the capabilities of SD to turn it into a one-hit KO machine, though it couldn't do that without sacrificing its capacity to take on many, many faster Pokemon running around now, especially with the advent of Choice Card. It wasn't a lethal Catch-22 situation, but a Catch-22 situation it was. Even if you ran a Double Dance variant on Gator, yes, you'd have the option to pick the more appropriate boosting move based on the in-battle situation you found yourself in, but you'd too often still find yourself needing both simultaneously, as the opponent would either outspeed you or withstand your hit depending on which one you went with. With SD and Aqua Jet though, that concept of catch all counterplay collapsed as Gator's full potential emerged. SD Gator was so threatening, it actually established a legitimate niche in OU. It wasn't a true OU mon or anything of the sort, but it was particularly vicious in the niche role on physical offense teams, where it fit best as a sort of hybrid between Gyarados and Lucario. Indeed, it often acted as a second Gyarados on such teams, being able to pull off tricks Gyarados couldn't dream of. Scarf Rotom A trying to revenge kill you? Oops, it's not at full health, and it got dropped by boosted Aqua Jet. Similar story with Scarf Flygon, which actually had it even worse because it couldn't even one-hit KO Gator in return. Getting revenge killed by Scarf Heatran? Not on your life. Gator's ability to take a hit often dropped it into torrent range, at which point its Aqua Jet was even more terrifying, and its flexibility and item choice made it even scarier. Barrier. Either Mystic Water powered up its Waterfalls and Aqua Jets to terrifying levels, or Life Orb powered up both of these even more, while also significantly boosting its coverage move of choice. Or Wakan Berry, alongside its lack of a Stealth Rock weakness and more singular Electric weakness, let it potentially beat Zapdos of all things, to say nothing of weaker Thunderbolts from Rotom A or Starmie. Among the non OU Pokemon seen in OU, Gator was superb, and it was, of course, even more terrifying in UU, where the surrounding Pokemon 
Pokemon didn't hit as hard and were hit harder by it. Gone were the days where Scarf Blaziken, of all things, could pick a weakened setup Gator off. The tier's lack of permanent Sandstorm meant, unlike OU, Gator could run Life Orb a lot more easily, which made it even easier for it to tear through common bulky targets like Registeel and Weezing after a boost. The only thing holding Gator back was the dominance of Venusaur and Milotic, both of which took it on quite well. However, targeting Venusaur and Milotic wasn't just the first thing on any Gator user's mind. It wasn't exactly a stretch to pull off given how many other Pokemon these two were tasked with taking on, making luring them consistently quite feasible. Once they were gone, Gator really went feral. Generation 4 was its best yet, as it finally unleashed its best self and was terrific, not just in UU, but even in standard play. Power Creep drops for Alligator below UU to the new RU tier, and there it was a fierce pick on hyper offense teams. Now it was a more specific pick, as physical water type combination was incredibly tough. First there was Kabutops, who is one of the most important Pokemon in the tier, with Rapid Spin enabling other important Pokemon like Moltres. This utility was generally more appreciated than Gator's sweeping potential, especially as Kabutops was far more consistent at executing. There was also Crawdon, a Dragon Dancer with far greater power thanks to Adapt Adaptability. However, this is not to diminish Gator. Though its competition was stringent, it was still a Pokemon capable of ending the game if supported well. Cobbletops and Crawdot were more immediately threatening, but Gator had several advantages over them. First of all, it was far bulkier, making revenge killing it tougher. Even choice band Hustle Thunder Fang Durant couldn't one-hit KO it. It was huge. Second of all, Gator's torrent ability meant once it took a big hit, it went far beyond Cobbletops and Durant's capacity for both power and priority. As such, Gator had tremendous capacity for locking down late game sweeps, and thus it received a great deal of usage and tournament success. It was a key figure on hyper offense teams because it consistently managed to take the momentum and heavy damage they set up for it and translate that into a wand battle. All in all, RU for Alligator was a solid Pokemon. Ah, but we're not done yet with Gen 5 Gator, as RU wasn't its finest moment. In Black and White 2, it began seeing use in OU as it was a unique, powerful rain sweeper capable of threatening common bulky sand teams, whose responses to most water attackers were Pokemon like Celebi, Starmie, Jellicent, Latias, or the Slow Twinge, which Crunch Gator mowed through after a plus 2 boost. Plus 2 Waterfall, particularly in Rain, also mowed through Skarmory and Fortress, so such teams really struggled to keep up, as Gator would also proceed to smash through the Heat Ran and Choice of Ground in Hippowdon, Landerstarian, or Gliscor, even packing Aqua Jet or Scarf Tyranitar. It wasn't just good at blasting through these slow teams either, as its powerful Aqua Jet also smashed through faster revenge killers like Terrakion, Thunderstarian, and Tornadus. In rain, the likes of bulky Pokemon like Garchomp weren't entirely safe either, and even if or when Gator dipped to low health, it could beat desperation attempts like Scizor's priority bullet punch to the, well, punch or ensure Scarf Jirachi wasn't going to finish it off. Its capacity of taking a hit was on full display against the likes of Keldeo and Alakazam too, and they would knock it down to full health, activating Torrent, at which point Aqua Jet was just merciless. Nothing like a Swords Dance, Mystic Water, Torrent, and Rain boosted priority move. Oh, and Feraligator even had defensive utility, with its Aqua Jet being one of the best tools for keeping the mighty Volcarona in check, as well as helping against Dual Dance, Lander, Asterion, and Terrakion too. Gator wasn't the easiest Pokemon to slap on a team, even in rain, and it was incredibly dependent on its trainers maintaining the rain in battle. Gator's biggest weakness was easily Politoed's tendency to struggle in the weather war, as Gator in sand was nowhere near as threatening, but under the right circumstances, Feraligator was a terror and even saw genuine OU success for the second generation in a row, and as such, Gen 5 was another success for the Gator. Power Creep once again knocked for Alligator down a tier in Generation 6, this time in NU, where it was terrifying. It was one of the most elite Pokemon in the tier, considered by many to be the best outright, and considered by some to even be outright broken. Despite the tier also experiencing Power Creep, it was still not a metagame which took Gator's hits very well, or threatened it lethally in return, which of course exacerbated the first issue. Even if it didn't immediately bowl you over, which it usually did, then it wouldn't matter since you probably couldn't take it out. It's not even that the tier was weak. Pokemon like Kangaskhan, Mesprit, and Hariyama are far from that. They just weren't strong enough to stop Gator. 
Gator. You couldn't even commit to out offensing it reliably since the tier's fastest offensive Pokemon like Typhlosion, Miss Magius, Rotom, and Pyroar were frail and thus didn't take kindly to Aqua Jet. Sure, there were the grass types Sceptile and Lilligant that could withstand SD boosted Aqua Jets and take Gator out in return, assuming Gator didn't smack them with a life orbed ice punch as they switched in. Plus, even when Gator didn't sweep outright, it would leave such enormous destruction in its wake that the battle tended to be all but won for its trainer anyway. The picking up of the rest of the pieces often little more than a formality. That tends to happen when hitting for Alligator Heart is such a challenge that it takes two or three Pokemon to get the job done, at which point your team is completely shattered anyway. And despite its controversial status in NU, for Alligator remained in the tier throughout XY, but then Oraz came and Gator was knocked down a peg with the ensuing power creep. It still was a fine threat, just not straddling the border of Broken anymore, instead resembling its placement in previous generations. However, the Broken Gator saga wasn't over. Not long into Oras, Feraligator finally received its previously unreleased hidden ability, Sheer Force. This elevated Gator's power to stupefying levels, turning Waterfall into a stunningly powerful attack and making Ice Punch and Crunch stronger as well. As if that wasn't enough, Sheer Force removed life or recoil on effective moves, meaning the item was far less risky now and Gator's survivability was increased. Gator was immediately so much stronger and so much harder to KO that the tier was immediately calling for its ban. It overwhelmed everything through brute power, with its Dragon Dance set becoming preferred over Source Dance to increase its range of Pokemon it could hit through Sheer Force boosted moves after a boost. Incidentally, Gen 2 fans delighted over this metagame, as Feraligator and Typhlosion were both viable at the same time. Well, more than just that, they were both broken at the same time, so you could combine these two GSC starters and be playing optimally since they were the most busted things around. Feraligator was banned from NU almost immediately to nobody's surprise. You know what was surprising? Free Sheer Force Gator had had just about no place in RU. Once it had received Sheer Force, however, the RU player base immediately started using it and also immediately concluded that it was too much for the tier. As a result, Gator got banned from RU almost immediately as well. At the exact same time, it was banned from NU. This was so utterly insane that it didn't even matter if it never saw use for the rest of the generation. Of course, that wasn't the case. While Gator wasn't exactly a spectacular UU Pokemon due to its lack of a defensive utility in a much stronger metagame, as well as the fact that the waters in the tier, like Empoleon, Swampert, and Suicune generally preferred to take on slower, more utility-based approaches, it still fit on certain teams. Early game, it didn't quite have the strength to immediately smash in the bulkier tier like it had in NU and RU, but late game, when it was at its best, it was a different beast. Once it got that Dragon Dance, it was a nasty checkmate Pokemon against battered teams. The thus making for a good finishing Pokemon on teams emphasizing heavy physical damage. Gator also had a couple uses in OU, mostly out of curiosity more than anything else, but it could threaten traditionally bulky cores quite well to open the game up for the rest of its teammates, depending on its moveset. And there's nothing like seeing Ferrothorn get eviscerated by a superpower. So all in all, Generation 6 was an absolutely amazing one for Feraligator, its most successful yet. Generation 7 gave Feraligator a stronger Sheer Force boosted Water Stab in Liquidation. Nothing earth shattering, but a useful boost nonetheless. It found itself in RU once again, where it was a solid threat in the same vein it had always been. It was all reliable in that sense. Times change, generations come and go, but Feraligator will always be threatening. It wasn't without its issues though. It had strong competition as a physical water sweeper with Shell Smash Barbaco, and both Pokemon had to compete with the most elite metagame defining waters in the tier, Milotic and Mega Blastoise, who were so useful in part because they weren't mortally terrified of a burn they would likely sustain when utilizing their most valuable resistance to fire, which meant switching into Entei's Sacred Fire. Mega Blastoise also brought its team Rapid Spin and was incredibly difficult to switch into, just as much as Gator, while Milotic was one of the best defensive Pokemon in the tier. Nevertheless, Gator was a highly threatening Pokemon and not just with its gimmicky block Dragon Dance Rest variant. Though that set did appear a fair few times, it lured in and utterly ruined Slowbro, effortlessly boosting up to plus six and steamrolling. More traditional variants of Gator were solid as well. In fact, Source Dance variants made quite a comeback, sacrificing speed boosting in favor of leveraging their incredible strength as a sharply precise, powerful tool for breaking the balanced teams that dominated the RU metagame. Standard DD Gator also saw some notable usage, particularly on Sand teams alongside the double choice band duo of Gigalith and Stout 
Scotland. They were also paired with spikes and dished out insane amounts of physical power, setting the stage for one of Feraligator or Stoutland to clean up. In a surprise twist, Feraligator actually wound up rising to Yu Yu seemingly out of nowhere. It really didn't have much use beforehand, but eventually players began testing dual screens hyper offense, and it was discovered that Gator was a phenomenal fit on such teams. Its bulk and typing wasn't just perfect for them, as it became immediately difficult to KO, and thus barreled through teams with ease alongside its vicious power. Yes, Gator really only fit on screens offense, but this team style was so dominant that its usage alone propelled Gator into the tier, and it stayed there through the end of the generation. That said, this was a bit misleading. Had the generation not ended when it did, it's unlikely Gator would have remained Yu and its usage was already waning at the time Sword and Shield came out. The Spikes based hyper offense teams revolving around Frostlass and Mimikyu had come to take over the metagame, completely eclipsing screens, and thus Gator's usage fell. Mega Sharpedo was a better fit on these new teams. Gator almost surely would have gone back to RU had the generation continued, but hey, this didn't stop it from being another successful one. And that's it, so how great was Feraligator actually? Well, it's had an incredible competitive career, easily the most successful of the three Jolto starters. Gator has been one of the best, most long-standing lower tier Pokemon of all time. It started with a ban in Gen 2's NU, a tier it completely shaped into its own image, then received Swords Dance in Generation 3 and rose to Yu Yu, where it excelled in the following generation as well. Gen 4 also saw it see use in OU for the first time, after it received Aqua Jet and heart gold and soul silver and it reprised the ou niche in generation 5 while also succeeding in the new ru tier gen 6 was arguably gator's best as after it was on the cusp of brokenness in xy nu it received sheer force early into ORS and was banned from nu and ru at the same time it also had a solid generation 7 with a surprise rise to uu at the end it skipped generation 8 and at the time of this video it is unreleased in generation 9 but when gator does return it's almost certain it will find success once again thanks for watching everyone and as always if you like the video and you want to see more be sure to subscribe to false swipe gaming for more weekly pokemon content and in the comments i want to know what do you think about competitive for alligator what do you hope it will receive in generation 9 Portera got shell smashed so surely for alligator is due something whatever it is let me know in the comments and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.